Best Darn Diddly now has a new home. You can find us at bestdarndiddly.com. You can also find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, Podbean, or wherever you listen to podcasts. So head over to bestdarndiddly.com and subscribe right now so you don't miss a single episode of the Best Darn Diddly Review Show. Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to the Best Darn Diddly Review Show. This is a weekly podcast for anyone who loves The Simpsons, or ever has loved The Simpsons, hosted by two dudes that grew up on The Simpsons. My name is Miles, better known as Mr. Most Days Off, and today we've got a very special episode for you. It's going to be full of fun. It's going to be full of laughter, singing, and friends. We are discussing Marge vs. the Monorail. And I've got a few guests to introduce to you today, but first and foremost, your co-host with the most, Richie the Whiz Kid. How you doing today, Rich? Well, I'm glad you said foremost, because that makes me way more important than everyone else here. But <laughs> secondly, I've got mono fever today. That's right, in the worst way possible. So we'll throw it back to you so we can get going. As always, the man, the myth, the monorail. It is Mr. Most Days Off. And joining us, two-thirds for the second time and one-third for the first time. Last time they were on the show, you knew them as the Rassel Nerds. But they were so excited about joining us for the monorail episode, they did an entire name change in honor of it. (laughs) Welcome to the show. The derailers. Choo choo! Pulling into the station. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us. And uh, Richie, I'm so sorry to hear about your mono. That's terrible. Yeah, you should yeah. go to the doctor, man. It's the kissing disease. Well, whatever Dr. Loud Landley wants me to go to, I'll go check him out. <laughs> <laughs> so, two of these voices you've heard before it is Ripkin and Goob. So, let's hear from the third derailer, the new to the show derailer. Welcome, Jenny Bean. Hi. Jenny, tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about your connection to The Simpsons. Okay, well, nothing exciting about me. I'm married to Goobs. That kind of sucks. That's pretty Um, exciting. That's very exciting. That's like Margin Homer right there, right? It's pretty cool. You are the closest thing we have other than my wife to a real life Marge Simpson. I'm just saying. (laughs) It is true. Totally. I kind of feel like I am. I love The Simpsons. Um, When I was a kid, my parents were sticklers. I wasn't allowed to watch it. But then once I finally could watch it, I just got obsessed with it. So this is one of my top five episodes. So I'm pretty excited. Yay. Very cool. And Goobs Ripkin, tell us what's new since we last spoke on the show. Uh, Yeah, well, what you said, it's true. Uh, We were the Rassel Nerds. Uh, We've decided to take a new venture, and that is uh, into the real. uh, We dove, dove right into the real art of podcasting. Yes. We are on iTunes as well as you are, so congrats yeah. to all of us. Yeah, iTunes all yeah. around. Yeah, absolutely. It's been a it's been a fun move so far. For we're still in the middle of moving over uh, from the fans podcast, who we love, by the way. Shout out to Steve the fan and all the great hosts over at the fans podcast. But Woo-hoo. our uh, our show is growing, so we're going to be getting our own web page and our own iTunes and Stitcher and Google Play links, just as you are. And uh, yeah, it's it's pretty exciting joining the ranks of the the big boys on iTunes. <laughs> it is, it is very exciting. Yeah, yeah. minnows in an ocean, my yeah, friend. Minnows right. in an ocean. That's okay. <laughs> that's okay. We we'll eat and grow eventually as yeah. well. So. We eat the dead things. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty There's sure like all those clone there. games yeah. online where basically you start as the tiny fish, and the whole concept is you can only eat the fish that are bigger than you, and you yeah. just continue yeah. to grow and grow. Yeah. Exactly. And eventually, you always get a little bit like, oh, I I'm, I think I'm bigger than that fish, and you screw yourself over because you don't just be patient. So <laughs> let's hope for uh, all of our sakes we don't do that to ourselves. I, I, I <laughs> When we were on the show last time, we derailed the fuck out of it, so that was kind of the birth of the derailers. It's true. You know, I always look back fondly at ed- editing that episode, because <laughs> while it was probably the biggest pain in the ass that I have ever had on a computer, I also feel like I learned and grew more as a podcaster than I ever have in any <laughs> of those ones. So, yeah. so uh, thank you, I think. You're so right? welcome. It was our pleasure. Hopefully this one's a bit easier on you. We don't ride you too rough. <laughs> <laughs> well, Only you know how I like it, this time, guys. Only one episode yeah, we'll this keep, time. We'll try to keep on rails. We should. We'll be good. But the but- show won't. As I say, but, um, it is only one episode, but it is a doozy of an episode. Uh-oh. Marge vs. the Monorail, one of the all-time greatest episodes. One of the episodes written by Conan O'Brien, yes. who uh, 
who went on to do a little something after he got done with The Simpsons, I suppose. He's been doing some great episodes here the last few weeks. That's true, but actually, a uh, fun fact about this one, Conan O'Brien says that this is his favorite episode that he ever wrote. Nice. Nice. Pretty cool. He's a man smart man. his own work. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's good. Uh, well, Goobs, made, <laughs> Goobs found an interesting fact before as well, saying uh, on the opposite spectrum, this is uh, Yardley Smith, a.k.a. the voice of Lisa's least favorite episode. Well, that's what they said back in 95. Back in really? 95. Yeah. Maybe she didn't have a lot to do in this one. She did not. That's exactly, that's, that's that's exactly what I, I thought, too. I was like, she's but barely I, in it. That's probably it. I thought she had yeah. one of the funnier moments where while, like, candor's just to her and tricks yeah. her. Yes. Yes, definitely. But we'll get to that. Sorry, I just thought we already was- got to it. It's over. <laughs> it's there. We're it's there. derailed no, already. No more Lisa for the rest right of the, the episode. End. Let's sing the song. Call it <laughs> <laughs> well, let's dive into this episode from the beginning before we we completely spoil everything. Marge vs. the Monorail debuted in January 14th of 1993. It's actually the first episode in 93, so we are on to a new year yet again. The chalkboard gag for this one is, I will not eat things for money. Yep. And the couch gag is actually pretty good. The Simpsons came in, per usual, sat on the couch, but then pretty much every other side character in Springfield came rushing into their living room, (laughs) blocking their view and sitting a few rows deep in front of them to watch the TV alongside them. Yes. According to my guidebook, it's Homer, Marge, Bart, Lisa, Maggie, Patty, Selma, Herman, Jasper, Grandpa, Krusty, Apu, Mr. Burns, Smithers, Principal Skinner, Mrs. Krabappel, Miss Hoover, a woman in a bikini, Barney, Dr. Hibbert, Moe, Kent Brockman, Martin, Milhouse, Nelson, and Otto. Jesus, it sounds like you're practicing for something that might be coming up on our 50th podcast celebration here in a few weeks, but I'm not going to say anything else about that just now. 15 characters is nothing compared to what I'm going to do to you people. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to add that I really miss Woman in Bikini as a character. She's, <laughs> She's always been best. up there as one of my favorite characters. You have in a the poster Simpsons. of her on, on your wall. Yeah, so. <laughs> She's overlooked a lot of times when you, when you talk about the great Simpson characters, yeah. Yeah, immediately that's where my head goes, but that's just me, probably. Not Overlooked is the opening to this episode, because I think this is not only a great episode, but just one of the greatest all-time openings to an episode, as they parody the Flintstones with Whether It Works, Waiting for the Bell to Ring, and we get Simpson, Homer Simpson, he's the greatest greatest guy guy in history, history. from the... Town of Springfield. He's, He's a about to hit, hit a chest of trees. Ah! Don't! Oh, the damage is pretty <laughs> catastrophic as well. <laughs> yeah, I used to sing this song all the time when I was a kid. Yeah. Yes! I remember it was with the monorail episode. I just I always went either. around school singing it. There's so many times we see these openings that we don't, re- like, we talked about it when we did the opening with the Indiana Jones uh, sequence, and you, you never remember what episodes they're attached yeah. to, but these true, opening yeah. sequences are so freaking good. I love how they never went back to that. Like, Homer never got injured or nothing. It's just like, it's his own thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, Homer's unbreakable, so he may appear yeah. injured, but he always recovers. And the car always looks like it has a dent in the front end, so yeah. it's, okay. it's like made for the tree already. He does that every day. Same chestnut tree. <laughs> <laughs> right after Homer crashes his car into the tree, we cut to the nuclear power plant where Lenny and Carl are sealing up uh, barrels of toxic waste. <laughs> they're discussing where these things go after they're done with them, and they mention that it probably goes to one of those southern states with the crooked governors. <laughs> and according to Mike Reese, the following week they received three calls from three different states wondering why they were throwing, basically asking if they were the, the <laughs> state being uh, accused yeah, of this. Why are you throwing shade at us, man? <laughs> Nobody from a salt mine messaged them? <laughs> no, no, I guess they didn't care. We didn't know what was in those barrels, okay? <laughs> Right after Lenny and Carl leave the sealed barrel lying around, we hear some great spy music, yeah. and Mr. Burns... Uh, Burns I'm sorry, no, it's Mr. Not spy music, it's Beverly Hills Cop, man. Yeah. Yeah. It is Beverly Hills Cop, shit, and yeah. we're supposed yeah. to review yeah. that yeah. with these yeah. guys. It all comes full circle. Oh, shit, I didn't even... <laughs> I, didn't even that's, I didn't remember that part from last time. <laughs> dude, yeah, we totally are supposed to review those movies, damn it, it is Beverly Hills Cop, and I actually really love those films. <laughs> Still haven't watched any of them. So, you shouldn't. Uh, you should watch them the first time. For a second, time I was about to be like, maybe Miles is the one that didn't watch them. 
Okay. No, I love those yeah. movies. <laughs> but yeah, to the to the Beverly Hills Cop theme, Mr. Smithers comes sneaking around a pillar, and then he waves for Mr. Burns to join him. They start discussing where they're going to dump this waste, and Bur- uh, when Smithers suggests the playground again, Burns <laughs> says, no, no. <laughs> These bald children are starting to oh, raise suspicion. Man, that's so funny. <laughs> the also, also, too, that whole thing was like a role reversal for a second there. Because yeah. you think Burns who popped out and was like, oh, Smithers, come on. And Smithers would come in with the cart. I didn't right. think Mr. Burns could even pull a push cart. Yeah. He's so, so feeble, right? Smithers yeah. is more the like the the spy that runs around and does things for Burns. True. And I kind of thought maybe they just like didn't know how to go about that part because he couldn't be himself and pulling the dolly with him but yeah i thought the same thing there like it was really odd yeah especially since burns can't even hurt a fly yeah. <laughs> ant. the ant topples him every time <laughs> they do decide to use the park and when they're trying to cram this barrel into the trunk of a tree and smithers is saying it won't fit burns is outraged what do you mean the last tree held nine barrels yeah. And we pan um, over and we see this <laughs> awful fucking um, curse of nature. Looks like the something from a Jap- yes. Japanese like tentacle. Yeah, hentai. <laughs> yeah. And the it does look like a hentai tree. Hentai right? monster. The, the, the residents of the tree look like something Jenny would love to see in one of her favorite B plus movies, Laser Squirrel. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. You gotta check out the sequel, Two Headed Laser Squirrel. It's oh, way better than the original. Yeah. I heard it has yeah. one struggle in it. Uh, it. It does. He's the star. He, he kills just, it. Just wait till they take on the oh. Crocodonosaurus. Oh, no. <laughs> take my money. Yeah, I love that. Laser Squirrel. <laughs> he actually uses his laser eyes to cut down an acorn and then yeah. snatches it up with his lizard tongue. It's like la- <laughs> the Lazy Squirrel. Yeah, it really was lazy, eh? Like, the yeah, thing was right like, in front. Like, I could all just grab it, but no, check out my laser like, eyes. No, I'm going to make sure my laser eyes and my, and my lizard tongue are good. Yeah. Yep. Dude, I don't been. act like if you guys could fly, you would walk anywhere. You'd use your powers all the time. Oh, right? sure. I, I, I oh can, my God, yeah. I can debate them on this. I'd have muscular dystrophy because I never use my freaking legs for anything. <laughs> just just refer you guys to the, the film series Ice Age. That squirrel tries to grab that nut all the time with his hands, and it never works out. True. Yeah, he could just never true. get it He does eventually, <laughs> but he fucks it all up, I believe. In the so, last one. True enough. Basically, that squirrel wishes he was laser yeah. squirrel. Well, speaking of fucking up, Burns and Smithers fuck up because they get caught by undercover EPA agents. EPA! <laughs> EPA! <laughs> so <great>. Damn EPA. <laughs> They're immediately arrested, and it's pretty great when they show up in court because Burns is getting the full Hannibal Lecter treatment as if he's yeah. some sort of dangerous <laughs> Hannibal. Yeah. He's got the, the metal mask and everything. <laughs> oh, that's great. For these atrocious crimes against this community, he's fined $3 million, which of course is going to break anyone, no matter how rich you are, right? Conveniently, yeah, no. the mean, whole plus, time he was arrested, yeah. it somehow plus, is no. in his front freaking pocket. <laughs> With inflation, that's got to be like $7 million today. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. But yeah, not only does he have the three million in cash to cover his <laughs> fine, he also has enough to buy the statue of uh, Liberty or Justice, uh, the Liberty Justice statue with oh. the the blind woman weighing weighing yes. whatever with a scale. You know what I'm fucking talking about? Yes. Which is hilarious as they show the paper. It's like him and the thing, and then he's got the statue. <laughs> <laughs> well, and also right above the courtroom, it actually had a sign that said "Justice for Most." <laughs> <laughs> what I want to know is. Burns had Smithers reach into his pocket for that cash, and Smithers didn't waste any time. He got in and out super fast. Well, I think that's yeah, a bad. I'm that's a bad. Smile on yeah. Smithers' face at that yeah. moment, like yeah. I expected them to do some kind of joke where he's just like, "Well, I can't find it, sir." <laughs> <laughs> I will dig deeper. <laughs> they announced that the town hall is going to hold a meeting to decide what to do with Mister Burns's money. And immediately, the Simpsons family starts fantasizing about what they can do with $3 million. Lisa actually has a somewhat of a Simpsons did it moment when she decides that she would like to see virtual reality in the classroom, which is now something that we could easily have. Your kids could easily be in a graduating class that got to experience history or geography through the use of a VR headset. You could follow around Genghis Khan through the... (laughs) War ravaged plains of Mongolia. Well, he kills, he kills, eats, eat who eats, <laughs> and he knows you by name too. 
caught him. <laughs> it makes me laugh. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's so. Genghis Khan knows you by name as well, and then it's like, hello, Ripkin. Oh. <laughs> you look tasty. <laughs> How much would you mark out if Genghis Khan called you by name? I mean, we'd all be a little giddy. <laughs> what true. I like was. <laughs> I like when it opened with Homer reading the newspaper and he was reading the comics and he said, Oh, Andy Cap, you wife beating drunk. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> is that a real comic, Andy Cap? If it was my yeah, game, it's it's the dude with like the big nose that's always wearing a hat over his eyes where you can't ever see the character's eyes, I think. Gotcha. Yeah. I know that. I, I believe that's if it was my uh Genghis Khan talking to me, you'd be like, Hey there everybody, <laughs> this is Genghis Khan. <laughs> 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 it's true. I had to get one of them. Sounded the most like out of all of us. <laughs> well, while Lisa wants some better classroom history lessons, Bart has a little bit more sinister idea. In fact, this is maybe yeah. the most evil Bart has ever been. It's and I know a little more realistic. Yep. <laughs> He decides he wants to use the money to build a bunch of robotic killer ants to <laughs> actually tear down the school. But the part where it really takes a turn for the dark <laughs> side is when the ants actually have Skinner in their claws. And Skinner is basically surrendering, saying he will give Bart whatever it is that he wants. And still, Bart decides to cut him in half yeah. and drop yeah. him on the ground. Yeah, that is grim. That is grim right there. Right. <laughs> I mean, Bart's <laughs> mischievous, but he's not usually a murderer. I mean, yeah, that's, pretty, no. uh, that's pretty extreme. He's not only throwing uh, giant tomatoes at his yeah. ass, not chopping them in half. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So that's 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 Sideshow Bob thinking right there, if you ask me. You know, it's yeah, so he was all scary. like, the Skinner the. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Marge doesn't have a suggestion just yet, but she does know that she wants to do something that the town can be proud of, which makes Homer think, like a big billboard that says no fat chicks. <laughs> that would make me proud of my town. <laughs> I'm sorry you guys don't have that down in Texas. Yeah, me too, actually. No, everything's Are you kidding? Bigger. Everyone's oh, fat down here. Dude, yeah, no, I, I, uh, true story, like, that's something that you will actually see on the back of, like, some douchey pickup trucks. Yeah, with no, those, honestly. Like, with the naked chicks. Exactly. So yeah. my wife and I actually went to Hastings, which is a video rental place back in the day when that was still a thing. You know, there, you could actually go and rent videos from a store. Yeah. yeah. And I shit you not, we get out and there's this guy in, in Texas. You'll commonly find these people driving F-350s, which are just way, way more truck than anyone who doesn't actually live on a ranch needs. Yeah. And parking over just, five just, parking spots. They're, they're oh, yeah. awful people. Is it called a Candy Narrow? <laughs> they might as well be, honestly. It's like a Canyon Arrow with a pickup or a bed truck in it instead of a, you know, an SUV style. But yeah, this this guy comes out and he's all cowboyed up. He's got this stupidly nice. big truck. It says no fat chicks. And I swear to God, the woman that got out of his passenger side could have eaten him twice like, <laughs> and still had room for dessert. You had to slap your forehead and just die laughing. Cause... You thought, just add a comma after the no, and then you're fine, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, no, that's It's all about the punctuation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> that would be such a dick move. <laughs> <laughs> It's time for the town hall meeting, and the entire town of Springfield shows up. It's actually pretty great, because Snake and a couple other criminals are like, wow, this town <laughs> is stupid, as they are looting the entire city. <laughs> They're going to talk people. about how to spend the year uh, $2 million, right? <laughs> I believe you mean $3 million? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have the punch sign after that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yes, it was $3 million, of course. I also love how they, they keep trying to do these little things that keep getting in the way, like, I don't know, saying the Pledge of Allegiance, and the town doesn't want to do any of it. They just say, get to the money! Get to the money! Let's talk about let's talk about what happened at last town hall's meeting. Get to the money! <laughs> I don't know, I was, I liked the first appearance of, of Mr. Snrub. I thought he was... <laughs> Yeah, no, that he looks brand, really that familiar. Character. I just can't quite place where I've seen that guy before. <laughs> well, you see, it was a debut episode. Yeah, I forgot at the top of the show. I usually announce whenever there's a new character debut, and I, I totally oh, slipped my mind on this one. On that one oh, man. Sorry, I, I'm derailing this show. My bad. Not to mention girl in bikini at the beginning. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I'm wondering if that was just Princess Cashmere. 
Could be. Yeah, it could be. And my book just forgot her name. I don't know. <laughs> that girl who wears the bikini. <laughs> what I liked about this episode is there's numerous parts that have like a 80s, early 90s action movie thing going on. And uh, this is, you know, we had the Beverly Hills Cop thing earlier. We have like Burns and Smithers with the escape plan here at the town hall meeting. And we'll have a couple more instances later where they do like the Quimby and Wiggum argument where I'm the, I'm in charge. No, I'm in charge. Like a whole bunch of old school action mo- movie moments that they're making fun of in this episode. Yeah, Smithers just has a grappling hook on him. Just yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's a spy. I told you. That actually reminded me of Mall Rats when Kevin yes, Smith yeah. and Jay get away with the bat ring thing. I mean, yes. obviously they're spoofing Batman too, but it, it reminded me of Mall Rats, and I know you guys are also big Kevin Smith fans. Yeah. So. I was I was waiting for someone to to say the line in the in the show in the Simpsons actually like where does he get those wonderful toys? <laughs> <laughs> now I assume I don't have to mention this, but just for the listeners out there, since we know Mister Strub is Burns in disguise. What? You guys know you guys know what snrub backwards is, right? Burns. <laughs> oh, I'll be honest, I totally didn't catch that. Really? That's awesome. Yeah, no, totally. <laughs> oh, in I'm fact, in that boat too. That's yeah. a <laughs> I knew you would be goobs. I knew you had my back here, brother. You're on the goobs level now, bud. <laughs> we'll, we'll go down together, my friend. We'll go down together. <laughs> Not on each other though. <laughs> I'm glad there's at least one other intelligent person on this podcast. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I really liked uh, a poo suggestion as well. He really wanted to see the money put towards more police. After all, he's been shot eight times this year, and it almost made him miss work. Cry, baby. (laughs) It's only January 14th, too. And think about it. How expensive is his hospital bill? My lord, how does he pay for that working up quick in that? He goes to Dr. I think he just, I think he, no, he just, uh, he works through it because he said he almost risked missing work a couple of times. A day of work. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) I mean, it's a bullet hole. Just put a tampon in it. You'll be fine. My, is that what they do in Texas? My leg is somewhat hurting right now, and I'm pretty sure I'm not going to work tonight, so props to Apu. <laughs> nice. That man's shot at work still working. Yeah, that's funny. Well, Marge has a fairly rational suggestion, though it's not exciting. So boring, in fact, that Quimby has to entertain himself with adult-themed <laughs> playing cards. Yes. Which is so per- these pornographic so playing cards. Oh, pornographic so playing cards. Yeah, let's just call them what they are. These are potentially these are full-on X-rated. <laughs> <laughs> he just announces it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he announces the whole meeting. Marge wants to see the money go towards fixing up Main Street. Yes. Which has been pretty worn down due to people keeping their winter chains on and driving with excessive weight. I love that it shows Homer driving (laughs) with his chains on, carrying a piano. And I think he says, uh, look at that pavement fly. (laughs) Like, I want to know who helped. uh, It's Homer Simpson. No one helped him. But I want I want to see him putting that piano on top of that roof and tying it down. I want to know where the piano went. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, there's, there's his brown. There's his in black. Yeah, <laughs> right. So whose piano is this? <laughs> we, we never carried a piano, but when the whiz kid and I were in college, we <laughs> had to have a beer pong table, and we went to the hardware store with a couple other friends. No, one other friend. Uh, it you know, yeah, it was just three of us. You're right. So we drove to the hardware store. None of us had a truck or anything, so we we had to use my car, which is a Sunfire. It was my car. Two, yeah, two was, or four door. Yeah, I'm sorry, it was. It was totally your car, yeah, but it wasn't a much tiny better. 2002 Mitsubishi Lancer that I still drive. They're basically the same vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> but we buy this giant board to use as our beer pong table, and we don't have any rope, and we were so broke we didn't want to have to, like, <laughs> We're at the hardware store, too. <laughs> <laughs> so... We drive home with all three of us. We have it on the roof of the car, and all three of us are just holding it down ah, to the roof with our hands. Fuck, man. <laughs> that's strength. Hey, we got it home. Someone called the cops or nothing because that Medication. blew off. You can fucking kill someone. We, we didn't get on the highway. Fire. I'll say that much. <laughs> we, we took the back roads, and uh, it, it was a journey. <laughs> but it was it was uh, uh some of the stupid they got shit close. We used there, to do. There's one or two times it started sliding down to my grip. Because I was having to drive while I was holding it with one hand. And Mike and I were in the back seat holding on with two hands each just for dear life, like putting all our weight into it. <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> Why it's are actually driving 100 miles per hour? Yeah. We're, we're I was going to say, so it's hard. probably good that Miles wasn't the one driving, honestly. We would have lost that too. <laughs> well, I think Richie was going like seven and Mike and I were both screaming like, slow the fuck down! Come on, dude! <laughs> I can't go any slower! <laughs> the wheels aren't touching the ground no more! <laughs> Yeah, no, hit 
really need to get a piano on its side like yeah. that and uh, and tie it down. Just uh, props. Yeah. Don't go over any underpass or under any overpasses. <laughs> yeah, over true. The giraffe and hangover three all over again. <laughs> Well, maybe not as uh, maybe not as grim and uh, violent and gory and bloody. <laughs> well, it's just about this time that Grandpa Simpson stands up to dispute Marge's idea of fixing up Main Street. But every time he gets a <laughs> word out, people start cheering in agreement that he they think he's trying to promote her idea. <laughs> I ain't for it. I'm again it. <laughs> we could fix up Main Street. Yay! <laughs> We could blow all our money on one harebrained idea. We could put all our eggs in one basket. (laughs) We're agreed. We'll all go around with Grandpa Simpson's idea. (laughs) Sounds like (laughs) crowdsourcing. No! (laughs) And they're about to vote on it when a voice from the back of the room pipes in. You know, a town with money is a little like the mule with the spinning wheel. No one knows how he got it, and danged if he knows how to use it. <laughs> Mule. The name's Landley. Lyle Landley. And I come before you good people tonight with an idea. Probably the greatest? Uh, it's not for you. It's more of a Shelbyville idea. Now, we're, uh, you wait here just a minute. We're twice as smart as the people of Shelbyville. Just tell us your idea and we'll vote for it. All right. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll show you my idea. I give you the Springfield monorail. (gasps) I've sold monorails to Brockway, Ogdenville, and North Haverbrook. And by gum, it put them on the map. Well, sir, there's nothing on earth like a genuine bona fide electrified six-car monorail. what I say? Monorail. What's it called? Monorail. That's right. Monorail. 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 I hear those things are awfully loud. It glides as softly as a cloud. Is there a chance the truck could bend? Not on your life, my Hindu friend. What about his brain dead slobs? (laughs) You'll be given cushy jobs. Where are you sent here by the devil? No good, sir. I'm on the level. The ring came off my pudding can. Take my penknife, my good man. I swear it's Springfield's only choice. Throw up your hands and raise your voice. Monorail. What's it called? Monorail. Once again. Monorail. But Main Street's still all cracked and broken. Sorry, Mom. The mob has spoken. Monorail. 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 Don't. All right, guys, we'll be right back after we hear from our Pottern family. Are you afraid of what goes bump in the night? Have you or your friends ever pondered a conspiracy? Do you want to know more about the unknown? If so, then put on your tinfoil hat, sit down, and pick up your computer, tablet, or phone. Go to iTunes or YouTube and search for Secret Transmission Podcast and listen to us try to explain the unexplainable. Follow us on Twitter for updates on shows. At Secret Trans Pod. That's S E C R E T T R A N S P O D. Or you can email us suggestions at Secret Transmission at Hotmail.com. That's S E C R E T T R A N S M I S S I O N at Hotmail.com. So the town is buzzing on the monorail. Everyone is excited about it, except for maybe Marge, who still thinks that they should be spending that money on Main Street. But Homer says, well, you should have wrote a song like that guy. (laughs) (laughs) Very true. No, exactly. It's a a strong argument. I just love, too, how they're driving home, chanting monorail Monorail. as they're going over the potholes. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and just, uh, we also skipped over the fact that uh, as Marge was discussing Main Street, one of the potholes on Main Street was so bad. <laughs> yeah, the popcorn guy. Yeah, popcorn <laughs> that wasn't a pothole. Carrying, carrying full of uh, unpopped popcorn kernels fell into a pothole big enough to fit this entire van and I guess fell all the way to the center of the earth. It was death. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, there's right, enough the popcorn, popcorn to overflow the, the street level, which is actually yes. kind of a convenient fix if you think about it's it. For the next person yeah. especially, uh, who will likely be able to drive over, not comfortably, but 
more safely than the popcorn truck. I think they're still going <laughs> to sink. They're just not going to sink nearly as far, and they could eat their yes. way out. So. Yeah. yeah. You eat your way out, though, you're still sinking, technically. Yeah, I just, I just love that. There's actually a lot, a lot of points, I think, throughout the episode where they show just uh, really crappy roads, yeah. <laughs> just to, like, really nail the point Hammer, home. Hammer, hammer, dude. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so. we skipped over the fact that during the, the little in- song that we were all blessed to hear by everyone right now, that I love the part where he pulls up the map of Ogdenville, <laughs> Haverbrook, and yes. yeah, it's, just like right it's now, only three towns in the whole country on the map. Like, he I, he I'm wrote them there, there, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and by God, put them on the map. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I believe Ripkin and Richie started to discuss it a little bit earlier, but this is actually where Lyle Landley shows up at the elementary school, specifically Miss Hoover's class, to talk to them about the monorail. You can tell he's just totally handling it with softballs. Like, you know, like one of the kids asked, can could the flash out or the monorail outrun the flash? And he says yes. And could Superman outrun the flash? Sure. Sure. Uh, sure. Yeah, he's but said then no, man. Lisa Simpson raises her hand, and while he assumes he's going to have to answer a question like, do you want to know if your dolly can ride the monorail for free? <laughs> this is no ordinary eight-year-old. But <laughs> in a rare moment, even though Lisa is very intelligent, her weakness is still, I mean, she's still an eight-year-old girl, and he totally schmoozes her, just really, oh, yeah. really plays into complimenting her intelligence, and she is quickly falls for his con man uh, rhetoric. Definitely. I think the question was like, is this kind of public transportation good for a small town with a mostly centralized, centralized populiza- that population? I can't even say it. <laughs> <laughs> well, little girl, the only two people in this room that would understand the answer is you and me, and that even includes your teacher. You've won her, her fiddle. Yeah. <laughs> Her sax was fingered. Oh, wait. No. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. Wow. <laughs> you took my role on that joke. <laughs> we get a transition shot of the TV back to the Simpsons home. It's actually reused footage all the way back from season two with Bart the Daredevil. Uh, where we see Truckasaurus, only this time it's being made into a movie <laughs> voiced by Marlon Brando. I'm sorry, Marlon Brando impersonator. I don't know whether to eat you or kiss you. <laughs> it makes me laugh more. <laughs> I like that it still looked like it was the Simpsons car in his mouth too. Yeah, yeah. it was. It was the same shot as uh, as season two, whenever it originally aired. I want to see the Truckasaurus movie I know, starring me too. John Truckasaurus. I'm like, this looks good. John I want to know if he eats them or kisses sure them. The, what happens? I'm pretty sure the fifth one just came out like this month. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I'd rather see John Ch- Truckasaurus in the movie Grease. Truckasaurus versus Laser Squirrel. Oh no! Here we go. <laughs> take my money. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up and take my money. That's it. <laughs> After the Truckasaurus ad, we actually see an ad for Monorail Conductor School. And suddenly, Homer realizes that it's his lifelong dream to be a monorail <laughs> conductor. Not an actual picture of school. <laughs> and I love the guy that looks like so much like him. Oh, so it's catering right to Homer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What, it even asks that. at one point, "Have you? are you on your third beer? And Homer's like, does whiskey, whiskey count as beer? <laughs> And I love how Marge is just like, it's not your lifelong dream. <laughs> yeah, yeah your lifelong dream was run to run on the baseball, the baseball game. You did it, it last year. year. He cost Springfield the pennant, guys. <laughs> Idiot ruined Springfield, Springfield game forfeit or game Springfield forfeits pennant. <laughs> Which uh, hey, it's another baseball theme for you guys. Yeah, we do. Well, this is why we came back. Do railers, monorail, homer, bad baseball. We we planned this, guys. We planned this right out. I honestly still don't know how you tricked us into giving you like the two best episodes from the two oh. seasons. Like, buddy, you love buddy, it's far from over. There's there's, <laughs> there's more to come. We're going back every season, picking the best. That, every you're other like best cherry picking, man. Was gonna hate us. <laughs> You know what's interesting is this is actually one of three episodes in season four tied as the highest rated episode. So it's this one, uh, one that we already reviewed with Simpsons writer Michael Price, actually, Homer the Heretic, and then one to come, which is actually Last Exit to Springfield, which is a few episodes away. 
They're all rated 9 out of 10 on IMDb. Tied as the highest rated episode of the season. Very oh, nice. shit, son. Very nice. No, see, that's basically what we're after, is claiming these ones before anyone else can. <laughs> so. I just want you guys to know in advance, in season six, my least favorite episode is Lemon of Troy. <laughs> I have a feeling he's lying. <laughs> <laughs> that is a fantastic episode. <laughs> that's actually, I'm, that's probably my favorite episode of the entire series. We're I, trying I, not to honestly, hype ourselves up too much for it. I think yeah. it's funny because as Miles was just saying how we steal all the great episodes, which is what I, we will continue to do, that is the first episode that came to my mind as one of the next ones. I was like, yo, we're going to do the Lemon Tree episode for sure. So. <laughs> it's, it's by far the worst episode. <laughs> Let's move on to this current episode, though, and stop talking about all the other great ones. <laughs> Let's not spoil them before you claim them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> already been claimed, okay? So anyway, when did they steal the lemon tree? Oh, cra- oh, crap. Where are we? What's happening? What's going on? <laughs> well, actually, uh, Homer is doing pretty well on the monorail pretest. You know, he's studying yeah. to become a conductor, and Bart's helping him out. He asks him a true or false uh, question. True or false, you can get mono from riding the monorail. Well, hang on. Richie's the one with mono right now. Richie, did you did you go on to a monorail at some point? False. I mean, uh... uh no, 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 you, you had, had it right! <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Wow, Dad! That's, <laughs> that's how I got through uh, most of school right there. I always just pick both. Just... But I would like to interject, <laughs> as a healthcare professional, you can get mono sitting on a monorail if someone else has mono beside you. Oh! oh. So you know. Oh, the aptitude <laughs> test did not cover that. Did not. But Homer was right because you picked both answers then. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jen, Jen has already written the uh, MCAPs. Yeah. Or, uh, sorry, MCATs. Was that it? Yeah. <laughs> MCATs. Flying colors. So, uh, pa- yeah, no, pass with flying colors. So, you got to watch out for that mono question. So, wait, yeah. you're telling me that you already know that mono equals one and rail and equals rail? rail? Equals rail. I'm only on week one what? of a three week course of that. I, I just don't think I'm ever going to get this down. I think that would be an awesome tattoo and or t shirt. I'm about that one, Miles. Yeah, I, I really <laughs> should. But shout out to popthreads.com. Buy any dope t shirt, including the ones from The Simpsons or WWE or anything you're into pop culture related. Use the discount code Simpsons at checkout, save 15%, and help our show out. You would now money. perish. Money. <laughs> I don't want to perish. Get so you better computer. do it now. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Three Perishing. weeks. Was that really all they covered for three weeks? <laughs> right. Well, Bart's actually impressed with Homer, and there's a sweet oh, yeah. moment where Homer even talks oh, to Bart cute. about changing his name. Maybe, <laughs> maybe he could become Homer Jr., and the kids could call him Hoju. <laughs> the kids can call you Hoju. Okay, wait. wait. I'll have to think Let's, about that one. I love, I love this because, A, I always used to quote this, but I, I wanted to do this the second I heard it. I love that part, the Hoju, but okay, so <laughs> right now... Uh, if your father or, or even your mother, who it doesn't matter, came up to you and said, All right, do you want to change your name to my name plus junior so the kids could call you this, what would your name be? Uh, so, for example, my dad's name was Ron. So if I wanted to change my name to Ron Jr., the kids could call me Roju. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyone else? I'd be Roju because my mom's name is Bonnie. Roju, <laughs> that's a good one. Bonnie, yeah. So, Boju. What would you be? Joju. Joju. <laughs> <laughs> That's the uh, the most redneck of the juniors. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't want to say the whole name, so I don't like that. Yeah. Person. So we're going with Joju. 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 Yeah. Richie, your sounds kind of fancy. Yeah, I know. I'm going to be Larju. Oh, oh, Larju. Larju. Like French. That should be my name as a stripper. Here comes the stage. Larju. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, you gotta be careful yeah. that you don't say you don't like mispronounce that or it just sounds like you're calling somebody a large Jew. Large Jew yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to think of a funny way to do it. That's his that's his whole stripper gimmick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ukrainian, not far off. Well, first off, I am actually named after my dad for what it's worth. So I have I am oh. I am Miles the second. Uh and I would be my Jew. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if you had if you had a third kid or a kid, then it would be my juju. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's true. <laughs> that's awesome. 
That's funny. I'm glad we played this game. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone play it at home now. Send all of you. Yeah, uh, yes. Absolutely. Tweet us at Best Darn Diddly. Let us know what your version of Hoji would be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> From now on, I am no longer Ripken. I am Roji. Roji. <laughs> Well, don't don't get too crazy now, because Bart did tell Homer that he would think about it. Yep. So it's it's only been a couple of seasons since then, so he could still be he could <laughs> still be thinking about it. Well, construction does commence on the monorail, and red flags are already <laughs> flaring when you see that none other than Barney is the oh foreman of this construction site, and he actually accidentally demolishes the Simpsons home when he waves I at Homer. At Homer. <laughs> <laughs> Was it Hi, was it the Simpsons home? I I believe it was. It looked just like it. It just didn't have neighbors. Yeah, I I never sure actually noticed this part before when I've watched the episode, but I thought I I when I rewatched it the other day, I thought it was absolutely hilarious. Barney's line after it happens. <laughs> oh, I hate I that sound. sound. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just drunk yeah. truth, right? He's definitely heard it before. Yeah, it's not the first <laughs> time. I had never caught that before. That no, I've brilliant. never seen that part really? before either. Yeah, that was, I thought that was brilliant. <laughs> so, it's not the first time he stopped to wave to somebody and crushed a house or something else. <laughs> <laughs> so, meanwhile, Marge has learned a little bit about the monorail, and she's concerned that Homer might not be safe as the conductor. After all, those things go pretty damn fast. Yes. How fast do they go? Well, I believe she said 150, though. Oh, later so in the episode, they say, I thought according to his uh, his feminine screams, yeah. now, it was, uh, now, you know, 100, 150 kilometers an hour miles, is that's not that fast. I can hit 150 yeah, kilometers an hour on the highway, <laughs> so, I mean... Jenny, did you get any speeding tickets nope. while you're driving the States goodness. over the uh, holidays? I caught myself a couple times going Good for like you. 20 Good for over. You. And I'm no. like, oh, I caught yeah. you. He caught me. He's like, oh, my eyes how on fast that shit. are you going? Oh, I'm not, not that fast. Hit the brake. And, and you guys have seen on the news how they treat people that are different <laughs> from them. Like, you Canadians! Y'all ain't from around here, Stop is saying you? sorry! Yeah. Yeah. Say Canadian lives matter. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, if there are any Canadians listening, the proper way to say it was the monorail probably goes approximately 240 kilometers an hour. Yeah. So that sounds you, like I got you guys covered. Talk. I got you guys covered for your northern neighbors right there. We're, we're international, <laughs> basically. It's in every country in the world now. 40 kilometers. <laughs> Honestly, I totally think we should switch to the metric system. It makes zero Gotta sense that we like, have our own little special. bubble of measurements. It's stupid as fuck. If you try to get any help Backwards. online, it's always in. Yeah, yeah, you have to like convert Don't everything. Worry. I know I got angry. Your cousin's gonna make a whole new thing. I went to a fabric. Truckonomics. Store. Oh God. Trumponomics. Trump Trumponomics. Truckonomics. <laughs> Truckosaurus. Truckosaurus. I'm sh I'm sure it's trickling I'll, I'll downwards, you right? Exactly. Oh, I'm one and a half Trumps. Uh, so <laughs> we already have that measuring style. It's tricks. It's about twelve tricks. Yeah, it's a, it's the same unit of measurement. Oh uh, yeah, sorry, I just I had to get the kilometers. In Backwards there. America. <laughs> don't you sorry us? It's all good. Yeah, we're sorry yeah, about sorry that. Sorry about that. We don't have boots. Okay, sorry about that. stop, stop with the abuse. Eh? Mm -hmm. I thought the boot was in Australia. It is. <laughs> it it is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Quit getting episodes ahead. We're not there yet. Oh my god, you guys about. are the worst. You guys are living up to your name. Country, if that helps. Claiming the Australian episode already. We well, yeah, shout out to the the uh, Glory Holes and Beer podcast, and go check out the episode where Ripken tells his drunk in Australia story. He's face falling right now. He's face falling so hard. Shouldn't have taken my place. Man. That's what happens when you take over from yeah, me. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta tell the big stories. I gotta, I gotta fill the shoes. <laughs> so Homer is in bed with Marge. Marge is expressing her concern about him becoming a monorail conductor. Homer starts saying, "Oh, Marge, you worry about all the what ifs. I mean, what if I slipped oh on god. a bar of soap yeah. in the shower? Oh my god, I could die." <laughs> Legitimate concern, by the way, for yeah, someone yeah, who that's, that's, shower skis on the regular, you gotta fucking be careful. That's pretty much uh, my, how my mind works right there. <laughs> like that. I'm pretty sure that's how I'm going out eventually. No, you're gonna I mean, go the Steve sense. Irwin way, buddy. Uh, that's possible. <laughs> yeah, I love, I, this is actually a pretty, cla uh, this is good for us right here because 
Homer totally derails yeah. his own chances yes. of getting laid. By singing a song. <laughs> and, then, and then he doesn't even realize he's derailed yeah. it. <laughs> he's still trying. It's so great, though, because at first he's like, Marge, you want to get frisky? And then he, she's like, no, Homer. And he's like, yeah, what if sexy. I unbutton my yep. shirt? What if I no, what Homer. Like, what talk like this? Talk like this? <laughs> <laughs> what if I sing you a song? I brought you a chicken with no bones. <laughs> and then from there, it's... Mm, chicken. <laughs> and, you know, he's totally derailed himself. Love yeah. it. Perfect. <laughs> yes, I've you seen know, that for sure. The original derailer, Homer Simpson. <laughs> His <laughs> movie ever, my goodness. Simpsons did it. Yep. Simpsons did it. We we do get to the scene we already kind of jumped to where Lyle Landley is finishing up monorailed conductor school. It closes off with mono equals one, rail equals rail. Now that concludes our three week course and yeah. you are ready to be a conductor. And then Otto actually has to ask, so which one of us gets the job? And Lyle Landley just kind of blankly points <laughs> to the middle of the room and is like, oh, well, I noticed that one of you exceeded far more than the rest. Me? <laughs> yes, you. Yes, sure, you. He's playing the whole time. <laughs> Who's going to speak up first? Yep. <laughs> I actually loved his little draw. He wasn't even paying attention. So he was funny. looking at himself. Yes. He had little drawings in his notebook, and he's like flying away to Tahiti. <laughs> Suitcases of the money. Suitcase full of money. Yes. Yeah. So, great. <laughs> so Homer gets the job. He's super proud. He's showing off things like the cup holder that you could also put a cupcake in yes. if you wanted to. I think that is definitely his plan. And up comes like, the best yeah. line. Yeah. Oh, Jenny's got Jenny's this. Jenny's got this. Uh, Marge, Marge opens up uh, the, the closet <laughs> in the cab. There is a family of possums. Possum. Marge shows uh, what is naturally concerned because it's not every day that you go into a monorail <laughs> cab, open up a closet, and there's a family of possum there. But Homer reassuringly tells his wife, I call the big one bitey. <laughs> it's my favorite line in the entire episode, and it makes me laugh so hard I cry every it's time a, I hear and it. And it's a line that resonated with Marge uh, later in the it's episode floating heads. as well. Yes. I call the big one bitey. <laughs> you know, Jenny, you're in good company on that one, because according to the director's commentary, Matt Groening himself said that that is his favorite line, not only in the episode, but in the entire fourth season. Totally, wow. I see that. It's you great. guys not all go around saying that all the time as well? Right. I call the big one bitey. <laughs> when you got a monorail cab from the World's Fair in 1964, yeah. you, yeah. you got to expect things like this. <laughs> it's yes, just, it's no. so me, too, because I love like animals that are ugly and adorable. Yeah. And that would be me, too. I'd just give them all like, names. Like, you scared me, folks. Yeah. <laughs> you, guys, you guys have a lot of possum in Texas? Yeah, actually, we do. Yeah, it's a big you, thing. Yeah? I don't know. It's him running on the road. It's an opossum, y'all. Yeah. Not too long ago, actually, we had a possum in our backyard just sitting on top of a like cut down tree that's got like a flat Aww. a flat stump top. It's uh I don't know, it's probably fifteen feet in the air. And this freaking possum was just sitting up on top of this tree and every dog in the neighborhood, including my own, just were going absolutely batshit insane. <laughs> and I think oh, what I happened is it just like got to a place where there's no cover at like du or like right at dawn. So he yeah. basically didn't have the cover of darkness to move around, and then he found himself literally where playing to possum get. until it gets dark. So he was just playing possum on top of this tree, but eventually I think it finally did get too hot for him to to just stand Aww. up. And he, he scuttered away, but it was actually it was like both really fun and kind of I got a lot of cool pictures, and then also my goddamn dogs just would not shut up. It was awful. Yeah. <laughs> But it was probably cute. I've only uh, started seeing them here within the last couple of years. And oh, I'm almost positive that uh, Goobs and I both work similar. Like, well, we work the exact same job, just in different warehouses. <laughs> I'm almost positive it's at least one of our works that somehow brought oh, them definitely. here. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're literally like the frogs in Australia. Yeah, through a shipment. We're bringing your America possums here. Because... Possums are not some that you'd see in Canada. Not a regular lodge, thing. Not like not I in saw the one city. walking through my apartment parking lot. Like it was really? nuts. Oh yeah, like huh. 10 p.m. Walking through like ugly motherfucker. Like oh, oh my adorable. god. Oh, they're adorable. Don't call them that. <laughs> like, <laughs> they're sweet. But yeah, I didn't call them bitey. Unfortunately, you should have called them bitey. <laughs> that was your mistake. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, true. But yeah, all of this 
combined, you know, a little bit of suspicious behavior on Lanley's part, the big one being named Bitey. It all gets to Marge, <laughs> and she actually yes. goes out to give Lyle Lanley a visit at his office. She gets there and finds his trailer. notebook. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it is a trailer. You are you are correct. She gets there and finds a notebook, and before he gets there, she sees that he's got a little drawing the same one where he's running away with money, except this one also has the monorail going into flames and the word suckers written above it. With a very accurate drawing of Homer at the wheel. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. That's right. Uh, Lyle interrupts and quickly gets the book from Marge and asks, how much did you see? Marge responds, nothing incriminating. Oh, <laughs> good. I don't know why I keep leaving this thing lying around. <laughs> I, I love that he, the character pokes fun at himself there too because like you're thinking why would somebody leave this kind of drawing just sitting out in the open for people to find and he immediately makes fun of himself for that almost to like cover their own tracks yeah. <laughs> I like how he doesn't make notes he just like Draws draws pictures. Draws pictures. Doodles, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who needs notes <laughs> this is the plan <laughs> that's something I would do <laughs> I, I Visual write alert. Is terrible. <laughs> my writing is terrible. Dude, I, yeah. I have a hard time reading my own sc- uh, chicken scratch for like these notes, and I like just wrote them before it we went. Sometimes I have to, I actually have to get Richie to translate sometimes. I just say what I think it looks like it might say, and he sometimes is able to figure out what I tried to write down. So it's quite impressive, actually. Did you have a write off. <laughs> <laughs> Our whole show is write off. <laughs> 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 Well, needless to say, Marge is not reassured by this visit with Landley, so she actually decides to go give one of those towns he mentioned a visit. She goes to North Haverbrook, <laughs> and she's startled to find out that it's a bit of a ghost town, but there definitely was once a monorail there, even though the townspeople seem to try to be keeping it under wraps. The lady says there's no monorail. There's no there monorail never was, here, and there never as was. She closes a window that monorail says Monorail Cafe. Cafe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is one man that acknowledges the monorail. He's kind of a creepy looking scientist who actually comes up behind Marge, but it turns out his name is Sebastian Cobb, and he actually helped Lyle Landley invent the monorail, or build the monorail, I should say, not invent it, but actually build <laughs> the town's monorail. And immediately he knew it was a bad idea because of all the cheap parts and corners that were cut. Yeah. After uh, seeing that guy, I wonder if he's like uh, one of the inspirations for Rick from Rick and Morty because he's a crazy fucking scientist. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, yeah, my haircut. True. He does have some, some Rick esque attitude to it. Yeah, and the haircut thing is kind of a Rick thing as well. Except he wouldn't apologize for it. <laughs> no, he wouldn't. He just burped and ah, let's go on. Blub, blub, dub, dub. <laughs> yes. Wrong show. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Sebastian shows Marge what actually happened to the town's monorail. It's actually still there, dangling from the tracks. <laughs> yes. Complete and utter disaster that totally ruined and bankrupt the entire town. They race back to Springfield to try to stop it before it has its maiden voyage. But as we already mentioned, he had to stop for a haircut, which in hindsight, Probably not a great idea. <laughs> I'm you surprised Homer little... knew the buttons to push to start the monorail. Yeah. Yeah. Of course he does. He's dressed like someone out of the Death Star. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's dressed like a Death Star yeah, lieutenant. Uh, don't forget that the... Uh, what, was, what did they call him? Like the, the Grand Marshal or something? Or what did they call Leonard him? Nimoy. Oh, it's Leonard Nimoy. Nimoy. Leonard Nimoy. Leonard Nimoy. Uh, and again, this is uh, Goobs found some interesting facts. Go ahead, Goobs. What, what did you what did you find out about Leonard Nimoy? Not only Leonard Nimoy, but William Shatner, and also George Takai. George Takai said no to these roles. So Leonard George Nimoy Dekai, was like the third like, choice. Yeah, George Takai like he's part of an actual like organization, I believe, in California where it was the, transportation it was the Southern problem. California Rapid Transit District. There we yes, go. Of course they know. <laughs> of course, not properly. <laughs> Couldn't at least pretend like we brought the facts for once. <laughs> Whoa, that was very interesting. <laughs> oh, I'm kidding. But yeah, I thought that was interesting, actually, right there, that Leonard Nimoy would be your third choice. I thought Leonard Nimoy was big enough to be your first. Well, they actually said that they didn't think that they could get Leonard Nimoy was the thing. They, they, they had thought there's no way he would say yes, but after being turned down by Shatner and George Takai, 
they said, why not give it a shot? And he actually ended up getting the role and then, of course, being fucking hilarious in it. He was yes. great in this episode. Yes, he was. Yeah. So he was the... What What? what did they call him? Does anybody like he... To, let me introduce... When he was up there, uh, like, let me I believe it was the, the Grand Marshal, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, something like that. Yeah, Grand Marshal. So, I, I wrote it down. Grand Marshal Leonard... <laughs> Grand Marshal Leonard Nimoy. Yes. Yeah, so it was the Grand Marshal, yeah. And fucking uh, Quimby says, may the force be with you. <laughs> yes, yes. Do you even know who I am? And let me say, let the force be with you. Do you even know who I am? Yeah, I think I, think I, I do. I do. Nope. Aren't you one of the little rascals? <laughs> <laughs> he does kind of like, look like an old alfalfa. Yeah. That is true. That is true. <laughs> uh, I was talking earlier about like 80s, late 80s, early 90s action movies. Uh, the the guy helping Marge out, Cobb, had one of those lines before they leave North Haverbrook that really makes me laugh every time I hear it now, but he goes, they like zooms into him real close and he goes, you just better have a damn good conductor. <laughs> <laughs> and it, pan, it pans right to Homer. He yeah. lost his keys. <laughs> uh, give me a rock. I felt, I felt the character of Cobb had a real, uh, I'm not even sure the movie would have been out at this point. Probably not actually, now that I think about it, but uh, I had a real like Val Kilmer from Batman Forever type feel. <laughs> yeah, I know Batman comes up later, but uh, even still, like the whole Val Kilmer feel to him. I don't know what it was. Don't know what it was. <laughs> but the maiden voyage is on, and at first it seems like everything is going great. Nemo is actually at the bar telling stories from the good old day on Star Trek. Did you know that those <laughs> doors weren't actually automated? They had stage hands on site that would open and shut the doors when they saw the actors approaching. And you could tell the guy he was talking to did not ask him anything <laughs> regarding yeah. Star Trek whatsoever. I also like the one picture on the wall that had the Hindenburg crashing, so it was a total fore- foreshadowing <laughs> to what's going to happen. I, hey, there you go. I didn't catch that, Goob, so that's awesome. I'm, I'm glad you pointed that there out. There you go. Did bring the I facts. So you brought it, brought baby. That's awesome, High man. Five. 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 Take no. that, book. <laughs> I like that they had a lot of fancy stars coming in, like Lurleen back from the Betty Ford yes, club. Yes, yes. Clearly went on a drink binge after Homer rejected her. Apparently Beverly D'Angelo did not want to come back just to say <laughs> that he spent last night in a ditch, which is unfortunate. Well, and this is the only time that Beverly D'Angelo doesn't do the voice for that character when she comes back a few other times for small cameos. That's a shame. They should have got her to say it. And I'm pretty sh- I'm pretty sure their 90210 character was definitely a stab at like Jason Priestley oh, at the time. Yeah. The, thir- the 36 year old high school student. He's hip. He's cool. He's <laughs> in high fairy. school. He's 35 years yes, old. Yeah. He yeah. smiles and gets all the wrinkles all wrinkly, on his face. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is that what's and coming up in a couple of years? All <laughs> oh, Brilliant. Man. It is cool. yeah. I wanted to bring up a question before we get into the downfall of the monorail here. Well, I'd, I'm more of a proposition. I honestly think if this would have been built properly, like an up-to-date monorail, I guess is the best way to put it, don't you guys think Homer might have actually done a good job at this? Possibly. It's not, I mean, it's not his fault that the uh, that the cog fell off the pipe, and it's not his fault that the Slendum seldom, break. That the seldom yeah. break stopped uh, working. Honestly, yeah, what are the odds like, of that? I mean, it just seems so <laughs> unlikely to happen. I, well, they seldom break, right. from what I hear. So, you know, I'm, I'm as shocked as you are, to be honest with you, but I agree, Speaking Richie. Speaking of shocking, you know? about the electrical fire? <laughs> See, you know, Those all poor these things possums. are outside of home control. You know, Goop has waited for his three or four moments in this episode and really nailed each one of them. Yeah. <laughs> Go me! <laughs> I also can't imagine it would be all that hard to actually conduct a monorail. No. no it seems like a pretty simple job, and he actually seems to be kind of proud to do it. So, yeah, it, it yeah. does kind of seem like a good fit for him. Yeah. He, he really takes pride in his work. Right, right. It's true. And it probably, to Goobs' point, though, it probably is mostly the Death Star uniform. <laughs> outfit for sure. And plus, he has a son looking up to him. Like he doesn't really do that too much. Dude, so. Bart actually calls him dad in this episode, whereas he always yep. calls him Homer. In this episode, he actually says dad. So yeah, it's a uh, it's a. Let's call him Homer afterwards. Yeah, later. Yeah, but still, that. it counts. <laughs> We already uh, we already talked about it. Things quickly go to shit on this shittily made monorail. Everything breaks all at once, and 
essentially, instead of shutting down, for whatever reason, this thing is designed so that when it breaks, it goes at max speed and does not stop. (laughs) Homer has this handled, though. He knows exactly what to do. He pulls the brake lever. Unfortunately, (laughs) he gets an announcement. The lever you are currently is currently not available. Please try another lever. Shitty telemarketing. At this point, now they're they're moving at a pretty incredible speed, and based on Homer's screams, uh, cowardice screams, that is, uh, it's approximately 180 miles per hour, or 240 kilometers for the rest of the world. 290. Oh, excuse me, I, I'm new to the metric system. Excuse me. It's okay. I'm. That's okay. That's why Sorry. I'm here. That's why I'm here. Pardon my American. How many meters ignorance. in a gallon? <laughs> oh, I just came back from there and don't even ask. Okay. Four. I was like 1.3. No. Four. No, like awesome one point. I hear you, Goose. I, I hear know you. this because you can read it on urinals everywhere. <laughs> what? Yeah. You Who pees you a know, gallon? You wouldn't know this. It's, yeah, clearly. It's, it says on urinals how much they flush every time you flush it. It says what, you know. It's, huh. So this is how I know that it's 1.3 liters equals a gallon. That's Who reads a urinal? Shit. I'm definitely not looking down at the next person. I'm I was going to say, like, where else do you look? Anywhere when I can. I'm looking straight ahead. Did Goob just say he's looking straight at head? <laughs> right? Uh, right. I, the wall. I prefer uninterrupted eye contact with the person next to me. <laughs> is, it, is that I just me? Next to each other. So do, do you make different faces? Yeah. Yeah, no. what? I, don't, I don't know. It's funny that uh, honestly, that is how yeah, I know. I would have never that known. That is how that I know. It says it on urinals everywhere. Wow, I didn't know that. Huh. <laughs> so, the more you know, folks. That's right. You can learn everywhere. Who needs school? <laughs> uh, I love I love this little bit they do. Uh, the monorail is basically flying off the rails, going at max speed in circles. Wiggum is actually like, ah, oh, this is making me dizzy. I'm going to uh, go take a nap. And then take a nap. Wimpy comes in and they start arguing over who gets to declare themselves in charge in the state of an emergency such as the one they're in. So they actually go to the town charter, still arguing as the monorail keeps zipping by every 30, 20 seconds or so. I don't know how long it is. It's not long. It's a small centralized town, remember? <laughs> exactly. Uh, but yeah, they, they discover, they don't really find out who's in charge, but they do discover that Quimby should be getting a pig and two yes. clean, I believe. Oh, that's Wiggum. That's Wiggum. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Wiggum right. gets it's a Wiggum. pig and then two women of a certain degree of purity. And that makes Quimby say, you keep the pig. I want to know how many broads I get. <laughs> how old is this town charter from like ancient Greek times? Dude, did you notice it's actually signed by Jebediah Springfield? Yeah, <laughs> that's actually kind of awesome. Yeah, that is historical yes. facts. Little, little tiny, uh, you know, little tiny details that make it just. So I, I did not catch that actually. Yeah. No, I didn't see that. They get a great idea to stop the monorail. They'll just cut the town's power. Only <laughs> these things are solar powered, and I love they got this. Ah, uh, uh, solar power. When will the people learn? God. <laughs> Fortunately, though, even though it's solar powered, we get a solar eclipse where the sun is blocked, which stops the monorail and gets this beautiful little statement from Leonard Nimoy where he talks about how it's a cosmic dance. And uh, they actually said they're not even sure if that line was scripted, uh, the director's commentary, Mm -hmm. that that they honestly can't remember if that was him ad-libbing or if that was a written line because no one actually remembered writing it. For someone, for <laughs> someone that could sing, like the, say it. <laughs> yes, for someone that can come up with the ballad of Bilbo Baggins, it makes perfect sense. <laughs> Does anyone want to change seats with me? <laughs> <laughs> I can actually picture in like a writer's room. They're all sitting there reading the script, and then all of a sudden, you know, you got the guy, you know, whoever, whose ever job it is to read like the, the the stage directions of a script. He's like. So all of a sudden, a eclipse happens and the monorail stops. And then you got Leonard Nimoy sitting there and he's like, ah, a solar eclipse, the cosmic day. Or, you know, he says his whole line there. And then the writers would probably just be like, yeah, no, he should say that. <laughs> <laughs> his way's better. I don't, know what, I don't know what the fuck he just said, but when, just he, say when that. he should say it. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever it was, it's beautiful. <laughs> he's so weird. I'm so glad we got him. <laughs> 
Unfortunately, as quickly as the solar eclipse came, it also left, recharging the monorail. It eclipsed? Yeah, it's, it's gone. Uh-huh. It recharges the monorail, which once again takes off to full speed. Again, the design on this thing is outlandish. Dropping Homer's confidence to an all-time low because he thinks he stopped it at this point. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, he actually, kind of a, a odd but somewhat funny scene, Homer actually, in the in the conductor seat with Bart, says... Are we going to die, boy? And Bart says, yeah, but at least we're going to take a lot of innocent people with us. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Bart, so Bart, Bart, Bart's been dark. Bart's been dark the whole episode, right? Bart has an a evil streak in this episode. Yeah. The pink by the... They just, la- they just laughed about it, like any good father and son yeah. would. <laughs> You're fine. Yeah, I almost killed you by telling you to do that. Your head's good experience. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What I wanted to say was the the scene right before that one with Homer and Bart was when Lyle Landley, his plane has to land in North Haverbrook, and he's like, oh, "Who's yes. heard that town name before?" Yes. And I want to know how do the people know exactly what scene right. he's in the plane? <laughs> <laughs> they gotta be looking for such him. such easy access to yeah, the plane, the like plane. they didn't yeah. have to go through customs or yeah. anything. Yeah, they had a pretty big board with a nail in it, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say for a town of people they that are clearly very smart. Brook Airport, man. I'm telling you, it's unsafe. It is unsafe. <laughs> I mean, you think he's he's got a map, right, with North, North Haverbrook on it. He knows where it's at. It's a big city, Daniel, obviously. Why did you pick a flight that went through North Haverbrook? <laughs> well, it was supposed to be nonstop. It was an unscheduled stop, but it's, that makes it even more outlandish that there's a crowd of people waiting for him there. So yes. how do you get how do you get from the West Coast to Tahiti going through North Haverbrook? <laughs> So, so the people of North Haverbrook <laughs> obviously paid some people off to say, hey, you need to take that Tahiti flight, drop it off in our North Haverbrook airport, which is obviously a big airport, and we're going to kill this guy. <laughs> you know, and the we, pilot we can asked no questions. <laughs> we can set it up because the Cobb or Marge went to North Haverbrook and Cobb knew that the same guy was in charge, so they could have tipped ah. the rest of the It all True fits enough. together. Continuity. It's, it's in place. <laughs> True enough. That's a conspiracy. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Toby at Secret Trans Pod, the Secret Transmission Podcast for you conspiracy buffs. I've never heard of them. <laughs> uh, I'm kidding. I love the show. I've worn my tinfoil hat. I've been on it. We all wear tinfoil hats. Yeah, I have not. I'm supposed to go on it. I still haven't made an appearance. I, uh, where are uh, you at, Toby? You get me on the show. The did it first. Oh, that's, <laughs> now I'm upset. Yes. <laughs> Three is ours. Dude, be careful though. We have to claim the best episodes coming up, all right? So just do yeah, this. Yeah, right? They're only good. getting clips. Yeah, no, from here yeah, no you, you should be on it though. Yeah, no, you'll be great. Yeah. Oh, I love conspiracy theories, man. It'll be uh, it'll be fun to go talk with those guys. But back on the monorail, all is not lost yeah. because Marge has come to save the day. She's brought help. Homer's excited because he thinks it might be is Batman. It Batman? <laughs> no, it's not Batman. It's a scientist. Batman's a scientist. scientist. It's not Batman. Uh, I don't even want the help anymore. I'd, Is it rather, just, I'd rather just crash and die. Camp Crystal Crew. <laughs> nice, Goobs. Goobs shouting out Camp Crystal Crew. Check us yeah. out on YouTube. See yeah. all about this shit. <laughs> Plugging stuff left and right tonight. So, <laughs> Sebastian has an idea to help stop the monorail. They could use an anchor. Homer starts looking around, and at first he just stares at Bart, and he does the classic <laughs> cartoon thing where he starts to actually look like an anchor with eyes. Bart says, think, think Bart harder, Homer. Homer. <laughs> There's the yeah, Homer we were all waiting the, for. Yeah, that's the moments of buffoonery. The buffoonery yeah. moments, he refers to him as Homer. But like the tender moments, he calls him dad. And I really like, yeah. you know they planned that. Oh, yeah, they that was well written. And may I just say that this is a, like, as far as good ideas go, this is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> you are at 180 miles per hour, 290 kilometers an hour. I don't think there's any boat in the world that's ever gone that fast <laughs> where an anchor has been like, oh, I know, just throw the anchor in the water. We'll be fine. Well, not to mention they're so. using a monorail from the 1960s World Fair. And yes, that, yes. that you have to assume that Lyle Landley wasn't buying new freaking metal M's for the uh, oh. monorail sign. So oh. how old is that metal? It's going it's not going to go well when you throw it into your uh, you're tied to a rope and throw it off the end of the monorail. <laughs> Do you think that's why they made it a solar power? Like Wolverine's bones? It's Texas rope. You saw it was a cow. Yeah. 
Obviously, it's the stronger. It can hold a ball. Yeah, so, so they can built hold it down Wolverine's bones and made <laughs> rope out of it. Oh, come on. Wolverine's from Canada. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. We take credit Darn for Wolverine. Right. What's up, Bubba? Hey. He also forgets to tie the anchor off at first, too. Like, he throws, yes. throws it out the window, and Bart's like, uh, Dad? Wait, ah! Did we even cover what the anchor was? We, we, we kind of got over it. It was the M from the monorail tied to a random Texan's who was riding the monorail's lasso. I'll take that. And if you're wondering why the M was so easy to pull off, obviously it was a really shoddy put-on M. You know, yeah. he, he cut corners. Of course. He cut corners. He probably glued it on. But okay. everything that makes the thing, makes the monorail go faster works perfectly fine after 40 years. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And it can, 180 miles an hour in the 1960s, are you freaking kidding me? Uh, Good stuff, yeah. right? But yeah, so <laughs> this anchor starts wreaking havoc on the town immediately. It starts putting, like, holes in the concrete, just slicing a line now, straight on. through it. Hold on. It, it did take. Motor. It takes away it money from totally this man. Havoc. Yes, it does. It takes money away from the doctor. You're going to spend this in a good light. <laughs> it's, it's a bad thing. <laughs> well, That's they have free health care yeah. up there in Canada, <laughs> so it's actually not a service to them. Yeah. <laughs> These Siamese twins would have been fine up here. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll separate. You know, big That's deal. That's great, though. Dr. Hibbert's but, like, yes, separating Siamese twins is a very long, very expensive process. Yes, it's costly. <laughs> And then immediately the High anchor five. cuts him right in half. It's <laughs> like a little lightsaber. Little it, it, it doesn't and make it sure Jeff is Springfield's birthplace. It, it, it blew up. I love when it, it goes blew past, up spectacularly. When it goes past you, old anchor shop. <laughs> oh, yeah. You time. called that an anchor. <laughs> Which, again, the sea captain, that's like, is that four or five episodes in a row now, Miles? Or did we miss him? I think there's one episode in between that he hasn't been in, but he was introduced in the last episode that Conan O'Brien uh, wrote, which was New Kid on the Block. And hmm. he's been in basically every episode since. So it's very interesting to see how much they like this character. And, and he's very funny, oh, so, so it makes sense. But finally, the anchor gets caught up in the giant donut on top of the donut yes. shop. Which actually is enough to stop the monorail. I love Homer's line here. He leans out and he goes, Ah, donuts. Is there anything they can't do? <laughs> That's right. It, it, we had total foreshadowing before this episode. Jenny won a free yeah. donut with her Tim Hortons. And, That's right. And now the donut so, saves the day. And now the, the day. donut saves the day. Oh, how odd. That's uh, awesome. Just like Almost it like Jenny's day it will. when she goes and gets her free donut. Yep. Seriously, donuts. Is there anything they can't do? <laughs> By the way, Ripken, did you say come full circle like a donut? Oh, oh. nice. Oh, this is why we chose this episode. <laughs> you guys call them donut holes, right? Those what, timbits, donuts? They call Timbits donuts. Yeah, that's what I meant. Like yeah. the little circle donuts. Yeah. You mean the, the full ball of donut? Yeah. yeah. What do you call those? Donut holes. Donut holes down yeah. here. Yeah. yeah, we call so them weird. Timbits. Just... Well, it makes perfect sense. It's the... All the piece missing from the middle of the donut Girl, is a donut hole. Uh, I, 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 I'm in full agreement with you on that. I'm not going to lie. It's pretty clever. We're all corporate up here. Go out to Timbit. Yeah, yeah, but I, I've heard really good things about Tim Hortons, though. Pretty legit donut shop. It's, you know, it's greatest. Well, not anymore so much that their donuts aren't made there anymore. I wouldn't call it a legit donut shop, but, like, to be honest. For I, Canada, I, I, it's, it's, it's the best thing you got in Canada. Sorry to sidetrack. It's not a legitimate businessman's thing, club. I've been to a Dunkin' Donuts, and their donut selection seemed way better than a Tim Oh, we Martins. have Dunkin' Donuts, and they are really good. No, we don't have Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, and no, if you go to a Tim Hortons in the States? I didn't even know we had Tim Hortons in the States. I didn't either. <laughs> all right, sorry, let's go on. <laughs> no, you're fine. Sorry. It's all good. <laughs> a Tim Donuts? We don't hey, you know what? Donuts. This conversation may have been derailed, but the monorail wasn't. It was stopped by Homer and the anchor. Bart yeah, actually said- says... Dad, you're a hero. And Homer says, Yeah, son, I'm the greatest mono thingy guy there ever was. <laughs> <laughs> so great. So typical awesome. Homer. Another moment totally Homer. <laughs> Do you honestly think the donut would have held it? <laughs> Not at all, no. And it's very weird that it yeah, didn't no. like get hooked in the donut, it just punctured the donut. Yeah. Yes, when it got dark donut completely out of its foundation and just kept going 180 miles per hour oh, to almost 300 hey, hey, kilometers an hour made out of, okay it could be wolverine's bones <laughs> <laughs> they had some left over after they made the rope and yeah. I, I believe the donut shop is 
it's lard lad donuts, isn't it? Is that not the popular that Springfield is, donut? That is, that is donut, donut of choice so. in Springfield, yes, sir. Lard lad donuts. So uh, Sounds good there's a lot of lard up there anchoring that monorail. So obviously, maybe the donut is made of just like a hundred percent lard. But then it is, would just be like, like I don't know. It's a big or donut. Hundred percent acre. Or a hundred percent Wolverine. We don't know, well. folks. I'm just saying they just had to wait until. It became nightfall, and then they. Yeah, were that's what I was thinking. Like nighttime's coming. Just have some patience. It'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get everybody off then, but that would well, be long. Yeah, some was setting them. Yeah. 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 But think about how nauseous Wiggum might get from being dizzy watching it go around in circles. You're not. You're not being very considerate <laughs> yeah, to others, true. Jen. He was. He had he a pig and two broads. On his pig. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I'm waiting for that pig to a get pig here. Pig and two broads is awesome. That's right. That's so funny. They get one more last moment with Leonard Nimoy where he basically <laughs> says, my work here is done. And Barney points out, <laughs> what do you mean your work here is done? You didn't even do anything. Didn't I? Didn't I? <laughs> and then we actually see him beam himself out of the episode. March has a quick narration saying, that was the only folly that Springfield ever <laughs> had. Well, except for the popsicle stick skyscraper. And the 50-foot giant magnifying glass. Yeah. And the escalator to nowhere. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the ah! magnifying glass is catching ah! popsicle sticks on fire. Ah! <laughs> that, is, that is how the episode ends. That's Great how the ending. credits roll. It's ah! just a bunch of random screens. Ah! So that means they basically had like a minute left and they needed a little bit more footage so they came up with that. Well, and Great idea. The, at least two, I didn't catch who the third person was, but I identified at least two of the three people that we actually see on the escalator as Rich Moore and David Silverman, who were the director and director supervisor, respectively, of this episode. They were actually animated into the show. Uh, I don't know who the third person was. Oh, that's just so great. That's got to be like, you got to feel so one cool them, when that uh, happens to you. One of them kind of looked like one of the nerds from Homer's college days. Yeah, yeah. I, I saw that too, actually. And it, I think that one actually might be Rich Moore, if I if I heard okay. correctly. You actually saw him in the crowd at the Maiden, Maiden Voyage. Voyage as well, yes. Yeah. Okay, be honest, though. Okay, you're walking down the street, you know, any street. You see an escalator in the middle of the street. Jumping you on don't, it. You don't know where exactly it goes. You just see that it goes up. You jumping on it? Yeah, I think so. You go all the way up and then try to do the thing where you run down the <laughs> I would yeah. definitely at least attempt to <laughs> I think Goobs and I both know we're just fucked at that point. Ride that all the way down. You'd have no choice. That was a really high monorail. Like, that's a <laughs> I long, can't run fast. That's a long run I have to down. ride down the rails. And honestly, the, the, the popsicle stick skyscraper, that's a pretty bold accomplishment. That that's, had to take some time that. and yeah. some resources, Guinness really. Guinness Book of World Records right Yeah. There. And I feel like it was just one person who ate all the popsicles himself. Oh, Homer. Well, let's not give too much. Comic book guy. Yeah. Comic book guy yeah. might be that's a little right more. He's like, I'm, he's like, I'm going to do something with all this. <laughs> I'm not going to waste these segue popsicles. ever. <laughs> <laughs> but that did bring us to the end of Marge versus the Monorail. Derailers, was there anything else about this episode that you wanted to point out before we get out of here? I think we did all that and then some. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, our, I think our goal was to try and derail your episode of Best Star and Diddly because that's what we do. And I think we did a pretty decent job of that as well as staying on topic. I know, I'm kind of proud of us. Yeah. Well, we well done, things. everyone. Well done. I'm, I'm proud it's of all true. of us. Thank you. <laughs> Should be proud of us. Richie, was there anything that you or that book wanted to add? My book, The Simpsons, A Complete Guide to Our Favorite Family, does point out that during the Springfield Town Hall meeting, the, it included the receptionist from the Rubber Baby Buggy Bumper Babysitting Service, which <laughs> is from Some Enchanted Evening, the animated likeness of Simpsons producer Richard Sakai and Miss Mellon, and school district psychologist Dr. J. Lauren Pryor from yes. Bart the Genius. Nice. A tree in the park has a heart carved on it that reads MB plus HS, which people assume yeah. means Marge Bouvier and Homer Simpson. Aww. There is a picture of a dinosaur pinned to the Simpsons bulletin board, a la the Flintstones, which ties to the opening of the show. Nice. And let's see. And then the book wants to point out that Swampy's Liquor on Main Street has a sign that reads Duff Spoken Here. And there's another business on Main Street that reads Pizza on a Stick. Nice. 
I can go so, for that right now. This book, yeah, there's a lot we missed in there. On a personal note, uh, I've been saying it for the first 11 episodes of the season, now going to 12. This will probably be my favorite episode of the season. I just, I don't remember all the episodes of the season, but I That's absolutely... That's just because of us, right? Totally. It's always, despite it's always despite the derailers, right? No. <laughs> I hate loud. I hate <laughs> That's not very I'm nice. just kidding. I love you. I love you too. Don't worry. But no, Wait, I, uh, these two, <laughs> we I, all I, hate Marvel. Yes. Hey. But no, this is a great episode, and it's always been great in my mind, and it actually lived up to how I remembered it, which rarely happens on this. Yeah, it's one of the yeah, ones you can actually party. watch back, and you're like, yeah. yes, it's still great. It's that party not... line, man. I can't believe I ever yeah. missed that the first time. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. This was actually on TV a few weeks ago, and I texted him when I was going, my God, Monorail is actually on right now. And I watched like the last five minutes, and I was like, I'm glad I didn't see it all because I want to watch it fresh. Yeah, it was still funny, still hilarious. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah it holds still, up very, yeah, very sure. well. Yeah, brilliant. Usually, I'm the one that says, "Oh my god, these are so hard to decide which one's the best and which one's not the best." I have to say that this episode and Home of the Heretic so far are easily above the rest of the season, despite the fact that every episode is probably going to be a contender for my top five. This one and Good Home one. of the Heretic are going to be my my contenders for number one and two. Almost guaranteed. Nice. We haven't got all the way through. Maybe I'll be wrong. Not Marge gets a job. I, you know, I love that episode too. It was really good. Like, <laughs> I was just kidding. So yeah, I but I'm I always struggle oh. with the uh, with the organizing my favorite list. That's uh, one of the hardest parts of the season. That's one of the reasons okay. we decided to make it its own show from now on instead of tacking it on to the the finale episode. Just because it, it takes a while to goes back and it forth out. for forty five minutes. It's true. It's it's pretty much <laughs> the entire uh, podcast. Actually, it, uh, we try to make it as entertaining as possible, but. I just want to say thank you so much to our guests, the derailers. Welcome back, Goobs and Ripkin, and welcome for the first time, Jenny Bean. We're so glad to have had you. Thank you, and we, uh, we'd we love to have you on again, but eventually we're going to cut you off on these number one episodes. I'm just <gasps> warning you up front. Never. You can't, you can't have them all. You've got to share the wealth. They're ours. They're ours. You can't have your donuts and eat them, too. I can have my Tim Hortons. And, and your meters per second. I'm in Canada. <laughs> land of opportunity derailers one more time why don't you tell everybody on the internet about your show and where they can find you oh uh, okay. yeah absolutely well first off thank you for having us uh this is uh, we're very proud to take on the number one or two episode of the season every time Hell every yeah. time uh, unless, it's like they're trying to implant that in our minds. <laughs> <laughs> you can find the derailers podcast on itunes and on youtube as well as Buzzsprout, uh, maybe more uh, websites to come in the future. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter at the Derailers. Uh, we still have the Rassel Nerds Twitter open as well to people who are interested in the WNW on YouTube. Personally, I am at Ripkin at Ripkin WN, and I am at Goobs at Goobs WN. Uh, Jenny B, you can follow on Instagram at Lil Sock Puppets. That's L I L. Sock puppets or at Rassel Nerds. She does them both. She's the Instagram god. <laughs> or she does them also at the derailers yeah. on Twitter. Yes, yeah. I do she's, it all. She's hey, look, I picked up god. the slack there. <laughs> the most god, I wish I had one of you. That's amazing. Oh, I can help you too. <laughs> <laughs> Anything for you. <laughs> I'm, I'm, oh, thank you so much. That's so sweet of you to say. Oh, I love him. Come on, he's my brother from another mother. You love him, too. My sister from I another mister. <laughs> See? There you go. It's all love here. You it's stop. You're not taking my spot. It's my <laughs> spot, okay? Just, father? I, I do have to thank you because... Yeah, thanks I mean, for having us on the you, show. You've given us this excellent episode. And Richie, cool. you're cool, too, man. Aw, <laughs> oh, shucks. Richie, oh, my... We love I waited, you, Richie. I waited an hour and 36 minutes just to hear you guys say that. <laughs> Aww. Oh, I'll do a special one just for you. Hey, everybody, this is Richie, and I'm here in a muscle. <laughs> Damn straight. And um, that means something. Just stop we, the show recording right there. That's where it should end. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we do have to just thank you for having us. Like, yeah. like, like you already said, you've given us two very beautiful, well, yeah. three very, very excellent episodes. 
uh, now. So three. Because, uh, well, the first one was two episodes. So oh yeah, yeah. I think he was laughing at. He was just laughing at himself. <laughs> no, I thought he was laughing because we had to record twice. Yeah. I'm just glad we all got to sing Monorail together. Yes, that made my day. Yes. So uh, thank you so much for uh, giving us the opportunity to be on the show and giving us these great episodes to talk about too, as three uh, diehard Simpsons fans. So. Oh yeah, it, it was a pleasure having you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, Richie, is there anything you want to plug before we get out of here? Uh, as always, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at the Wiz underscore kid 23. Also, while you're on Twitter, go ahead and follow our show as well. That's at Best Darn Diddly. That's D-I-D-D-L-Y. And it's the same on Facebook and Instagram. And now you can find our show at its new home, bestdarndiddly.com. And you can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and everywhere else. So let me upload it. Apparently on the bathroom urinal, too. Just look for Best Darn Diddly <laughs> wherever you listen to podcasts and you'll find it. Other than that, the Wizkid and I look forward to being back with you again next week when we'll be discussing the episode... Selma's Choice. You better check that out. That's why uh, some would say, shit, yeah. We look forward to having all you listen Jews with us. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> That's called a callback. Nice. <laughs> and until next time, be cromulent to each other. Hey guys, it's Richie the WizKid here from the Best Darn Diddly Review Show, and I'm here to talk to you about PopThreads.com, your number one source for finding awesome nerdy t-shirts. Are you sick from not knowing what to wear when you go out with all your friends on the weekends? Well, don't have a cow, man. Go to PopThreads.com, and if you use the code SIMPSONS at checkout, you can save 15% on all your t-shirt needs.